Hey everybody, welcome to the Shy Panther and Friends show. I am your host, Shy Panther. Thank you for stopping by and before you go, please hit that subscribe button. You knew I was going to ask, so go ahead and do that. And for the next hour, you will enjoy my great interview with three legendary blues musicians, John Watkins, Maurice John Vaughn, and Freddie Dixon. Thank you, and please don't forget to share, and also follow us. You may as well follow us on Instagram at Shy Panther and Friends Show. I'll see you soon. Everybody, welcome to the Shy Panther and Friends Show. I am Shy Panther, also known as Gail. We broadcast from q4radio.org right here in Chicago. And to, in case you don't know about the show, we were here in 2019, but we had to leave because of the pandemic. So I'm super happy to be back. And this season, we're going to focus on music and culture. So I have decided to bring in some amazing musicians, legendary musicians. And the one is joining us via Skype, that's John Watkins. And to my left, we have Maurice John Vaughn. And to my far left, we have Freddie Dixon. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring them in. Welcome, gentlemen. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Thank you very much. I All don't right. see John's picture up here. Where's he at? Well, I, I couldn't. Uh, oh, okay. Pop it up we're, here, we're, but we're, we're I'll do it. We don't need this picture. No, we, I'm, I'm going to make sure it's there by the time I edit. I'm going to make sure his picture is all throughout the video when I edit. Okay. Okay, so everybody, it is so wonderful to be here. And um, I want to talk about and raise awareness for the preservation of the art form called the blues. Amen. All yes. right. So we can, I wanted to start with... Um, introductions of course so that the people know who you are so maurice would you like to <laughs> he's no, telling yeah. me to start with yeah, yeah, with freddie you want to go ahead and start yeah because you're doing the culture thing oh no yeah. well no, no, no. i got a lot of stuff for you too so <laughs> so don't try to don't try to okay, uh, escape it out, <laughs> don't try to okay. escape Okay, um, Freddie, we can start with you. Actually, since I have three of you, I wanted to just kind of throw questions out and then we go around. Okay. Um, that way we no, can no, get fine. everybody to say something. Okay, so how are you, where are you guys from? I'm from Chicago. Born from and Chicago? Raised here. Okay. Uh, I was Reese. born in Chicago. You were, okay, John, born in Chicago. That makes all three of us. All three, okay. Right. All right, so when... How did you all come together as a band? Well, probably through uh, uh, the association with uh, Willie Dixon mm. and uh, 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 the other artists that uh, Maurice and well, Freddie and I were were together with the Chicago Blues All Stars since about what 78, something like that. Uh, I can't remember. This is to be loud. Yeah. And we we kind of been uh, it's like a family. We've been associated okay. o over 40, 50 years. Wow. Yeah, and uh, me and Maurice. I remember when I first met Maurice, he was playing with Phil Guy, and I did a gig with Phil. And met Maurice, he was playing saxophone then. I didn't know he could play guitar. That's a, he's an amazing guy here. So mm. that's a, and that was in the eighties, eighty three, eighty something like that. I met uh, Maurice. Okay. And, and we've been hanging around and <laughs> running, running up and down these highways like and byways. <laughs> running up and down these highways and byways trying to get that hit record. Yeah. All right. And I think we got one. Out. Yeah. Trying to get that hit out. All right. right. Yeah. So uh, do, do you all have Hall of Fame status? Everybody yes, been inducted into the Hall of Fame? John? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All yes. right. Okay. Yeah. Chicago Hall of Fame and John has one in Detroit, right? To, yeah, yeah. I have one, uh, another one, uh, Hall of Fame in, uh, induction in, in Edmonton, uh, Alberta, Canada. All right. So, mm. well, as, uh, as a matter of fact, Maurice, you have been uh, uh, inducted into another Hall of Fame up there in uh, uh, Edmonton. Yes, it's, yeah, it should right. be uh, hosting somewhere near August to September this year. I don't. Yeah, he just spoke yeah. on that, yeah. John. Yes, yeah, right. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, John. So, 
Johnson, Detroit. Give me All right. Yeah, 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 right. Yes. Okay. Got time lapse. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get a new poll. <laughs> you guys, kind of terrible. All right, so what inspired everybody? Who got you started into music? Well, I was born in it. I, ever since I was a baby, I've been hearing the blues through my father. Okay. Uh, chess records, everybody at chess records used to come by the house when I was a kid. But before, before that, I was, uh, when I was a uh, about four years old, I used to go over to the Union Hall with my father, mm. and, and I was listening to the guys play and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I was on 40th and in, in, uh, State, and we stayed on 39th and State, so I walked over to the Union Hall and listened to the cats play and, okay. and all that kind of stuff. And then after after a while, uh, um, I started to um, cats started coming around the house playing piano. Uh, you think some everybody was coming to my house, and that's how I got into the blues about sitting around listening to the guys play, okay, and uh, and 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 watching people play, you know. But, mm -hmm. but it, was, it was a great it's a great learning experience. Uh, anytime you learn an instrument, it's a great experience. It keeps keep you out of trouble first of all, right? So you know, uh, uh, <laughs> it kept me out of trouble because you know I had to learn to play the piano. My father teaching me piano which he didn't know piano, but he could pick out songs. And I learned a little piano from him. Okay. And then eventually uh, um, I started working with him. But, uh, but before that, uh, um, I, I would just, I ran a studio at um, 7711 South Racing. And um, and anybody came by there with an instrument, I would um, watch them and listen and learn, you know. Mm -hmm. But I was mainly down there for the... Uh, the recording side, and I'm gonna tell you a quick story how I got into playing uh, the bass guitar. Because before that, I was playing drums and flute, you know. Okay. And so, mm -hmm. so my father, he was going out of town, he's going over to Europe. He said, he, he bought a bass guitar. He said, whatever you do, don't you touch this bass guitar. <laughs> and he knew that I was gonna touch that bass guitar. <laughs> of course. And so that's how he tricked me into playing bass. And, that, and so, and that's what. Now I'm stuck with this guy, John, <laughs> trying to make a living playing the bass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Maurice? Uh, um, well, I started in um, grammar school and started playing. Um, I learned how to, uh, how to read music with the, with, the, with the drums there. And then mm -hmm. it always went to another instrument, to another instrument. Well, if you only played this, then we, you know, so, so that's why I kept changing the instrument. I always had to change uh, uh, something like that. Well, I, I played the baritone horn because they had drummers. They had four drummers already. They didn't need any more drummers. So I, I just played the baritone horn. And, and then the guy said, oh, if you play saxophone, you could be in our band. So I went out and rented the saxophone from the school and then got the saxophone playing. Well, well if, you, if you sang, you could play some more gigs <laughs> like that. So I just started singing a little bit. And uh, and then uh, if you only had your CD out, you probably would, you know, would get some more gigs. Mm. So it was everything was just tumbled after that, kind of after that. I played, started playing the guitar because... Um, um, all the, all the, everybody broke down into the rhythm sections and mm -hmm. they weren't using the horns that much anymore where I was, you know. So yeah. that, so, the, so I said, well, I got to keep playing. So I started playing guitar. Right. And, and uh, I played with uh, different people, A.C. A. Reed, uh, uh, Luther Allison, and the people like that. I just, mm -hmm. and that. That path chose me, basically, you know. So, mm -hmm. so um, but I was glad I, when I... Um, Run into, I ran into Freddie playing with um, uh, A.C. Reed because we had the first gig together. Yeah. We were out there, Albuquerque, New Mexico, to play, play like uh, four days, you know. And, but and Keith Hudson was with us. About 80 years or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> 80? Yeah, oh something like that. Eight, eight, eight years or something. And then yeah. he stopped to do a play. And then we, you know, right. So, so but, but uh, here we are. I know it, yeah. We'll get to that later. Yeah, yeah we will. John? Mm -hmm. Well, I started uh, around uh, 69. Uh, I basically came from uh, DuSable High School. They had an organization over there called the Robert Taylor Youth Foundation, right? Mm -hmm. And I got involved with those guys. And uh, come to find out, I had 
uh, two uncles that was in the business, which impressed me. One, one was Phil Johnson. He had a record out called Sock It To Me, all right, at that time. And then he came out with another one, Take Me To The River, which Al Green recorded. And they actually recorded at the same time. And I got impressed by that. So I migrated from uh, Robert Tilly Youth Foundation to uh, Teresa's Lounge. Now, that was a lounge that had artists from all over the world. You know, James Cotton, uh, uh, Eric Clapton, uh, Johnny Winter, Steve, uh, even Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know. Mm. And I wanted to be like those guys. So mm. I hung around Teresa and, until somebody came. You know, my first gig out on the road was from Teresa with, with the James Cotton Blues Band, you know. And after that, uh, that was a short stint anyway, but I ended up playing in a, 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 a record rock group called Morning After. And from there, Willie Dixon gave me a job. I stayed with Willie for almost 20 years, you know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> up okay. until the date. Okay. So now I'm fortunate to be with Maurice and uh, Freddie. Yeah. And during all that time, we were still friends, yeah. we playing with different artists, but we yeah. still hung out together, you know. Yeah. Now, I want to ask, yeah. um, Teresa's Lounge, Every all of my research, it keeps popping up, popping up. So how important was it to have played at Teresa's Lounge? Did it? What did it do for you, you guys' career? I know everybody seemed to be, came through there. Well, let me tell you my story. Teresa's up. Well, go ahead, John. Well, that's where I learned to uh, be an artist from being down there because I watched Junior Wells and Buddy Guy, uh, Jimmy Johnson, and so many uh, uh, Flurry. Uh, I, it's, the list goes on. I could be here till 5 o'clock and still <laughs> haven't finished the list okay. of artists that started out down there. You know? Yeah, very impressive. I mean, I was just blown away, and I'm like, man, I should have been alive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I can roll through there. Yeah, because a, a, a lot of great artists came uh, through Teresa's white and black, you know. Yeah. So if you wanted to learn the blues, that was the place That was to the go. place. That okay. Was the place you cut your yeah. Teeth right down. A lot of them are flowing today, like John Primer and uh, 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 Sugar Blue and all those oh, cats, okay. you know. I mean, the club, the club had live music seven nights a week, okay, 365 days a year. Mm. So <laughs> that sparked a lot of interest for a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and the history of some of these lounges, I just, you know, you go through and the, the, some were, uh, of course, way before my time. Um, and I kind of ran across Silvio's. I don't know if you guys know that. Gatewood. That's on the west side. Gatewood yep. Tavern. Club Delisa, yeah, Delisa. That, yeah, that's, that was before my time. Before, Delisa. yeah, the Checkerboard Lounge. Yeah, I remember that. I was okay. Up there. The Flame. No, no it was, that no, was way right before. Lot, lot, lot of was on, <laughs> before. Lot of places was on the west side. Oh, okay. You know, and, uh, yeah. I didn't really go on the west side at that time unless I had a gig, and I didn't get too many gigs on the oh, west there. side. You know, now so. that's another thing I want to ask you guys too. Um, when you're deciding on the gigs. What's a go and what's a no go for you guys? The money. The money. The money. Yeah. yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and did you mention all these uh, lounges and yeah. stuff like that? Uh, back then, it was just a gig. You know, right. just, yeah. your gig is over here. That's where we're going. That's where you know, going. Like, but after after a while, it became uh, you know um, mm -hmm. uh, the middle of everything, the spot. You know where everybody got to go to. Right. Be. You go there to hang out. If you need a gig, yeah, right. <laughs> you go. You know, there's people hanging out there just to just to uh, uh, make a little money, to low help load equipment or something mm -hmm. like that. It's, uh, it's, it's all kind of history behind it. People Not only that, Maurice, uh, <laughs> we've gained a lot of information from a lot of bands because I would go to see how they were performing. You know, oh, yeah. and yeah. I, I inco yeah. incorporated a lot of that stuff in my show. Today. Yeah, you learn, okay. you learn by observation, watching and listening, you know. So um, you pick up the uh, uh, 
tips from everybody. I do. I try to pick up tips from everybody who's doing anything, you know. Um, right. Because that's where you learn, yeah. you know. And uh, uh, I remember when they used to have them Blue Monday jams everywhere. Um, I was coming around with my little bass guitar, and I, didn't say, I know they said, here you come again. <laughs> and so you know, I come down and mess up. But see, you, I learn from the mess ups. You don't do that no more. Yeah, yeah. Learn from your mistakes. Yeah. That's what it's all about. It's it's a part of it. Right. Yeah. All right, you guys are leaving out the best part of the whole thing during our career. I I wanted to be a musician because of the ladies. (laughs) Every one of the musicians had a bunch of ladies, and that intrigued me, okay? Well, it's a downfall to that, too, now. I I ended up with two child support cases at the same time. (laughs) Not a I don't think you go into that job. Right, right. I hope you learned something from that. <laughs> yeah, that's why I, I stay home nowadays. I was hoping that people wasn't going to catch up with you. But you, know. <laughs> 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 you know, I'm 70 you years, 71 years old, I'm still paying child support. Well, you must yeah. have it to pay. Oh, you must be something else. <laughs> 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 Let's keep it clean, John. Let's keep it clean. <laughs> so you yeah, guys, yeah, but I'm 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 happy today because all my children graduated from college, and uh, I have one that's uh, head of her own business right now, and she's nice. uh, uh, one of the computer analysts analysts mm-hmm. at the Social Security Social Security Administration. That's cool, oh, John. Yeah. So. It's just a lot of good came out of that, okay? It wasn't mm-hmm. all bad. It wasn't all bad about them women, neither, was it? <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. So you guys... You know what? Go ahead. Freddie me. had a saying. We were all at a concert out in uh, San Francisco, you know. All right. And I heard him say, you know, all I want is some sex and a sandwich. And, right. you know, I was surprised. Matter of fact, I was flabbergasted because too. they fell for that. You I'm know? surprised too, John. Yeah, I've never I'm heard that you, saying I'm before. It all. I think I got that from Maurice. <laughs> I must have got that from Maurice or somebody. Uh, oh no! <laughs> Officially, I'm not in that. No. <laughs> so you so, that been caught yet? That's all. <laughs> so have you guys ever had have a relationship and you wrote a song about it? You try to stay away from that. You yeah. try to stay away from that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I wrote the song, uh, Here I Am, Knocking at Your Door Again. James Cotton recorded it, you know. Mm. And actually, the song went up for a Grammy. Mm. But here come Albert Collins and Robert Cray and, and all the other guys, and they bumped us out. But we came in second place. Mm, That's okay. good. Now, um... And Maurice did a song. Uh, what name of that song you did? Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I, you know. I, I wrote about some you know, some about life experiences. Wake up, wake up, Maurice. Like wake yeah. up, Maurice. You <laughs> know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> they don't want to. They don't want to. They don't want to tell it you all. Know, you don't want to. But you might as well. Exposed over the radio. <laughs> I can't remember you wrote them all. It, you I wrote, wrote about it. fifty or sixty songs. So yeah. I, you know. So yeah. I, I can't uh, hmm. list them all on the radio. But I wrote mm-hmm. about life experiences. So you yeah. know, other people. So, uh, I wrote computer took my job, but it didn't happen to me, but it was happening to a, to lot a of bunch people. of people See, still. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what um so that brings me to what's your favorite song that you wrote or to perform? Everybody? Mm. Well, for me, yeah. it's everything I do got to be funky. So, All right. Because it's been the, uh, that, that did the most. Well, Maurice wants, wrote a song that I'm really crazy about. Mm-hmm. It's called The Traveling Man. Traveling. Mm-hmm. That song yeah. hit many parts of my life. That's why I like not only just the groove and the words. And I, I, I've actually lived that song, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank so you. that's I one of my favorites. That, John. Uh, it, 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 it hit home for a couple of... Um, for a couple of those uh, verses like that. That that that, that is uh, a lot about me and friends of mine mm-hmm. too. So mm-hmm. that's 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 what I was trying to encompass it, you know. Okay. Let everybody know. So but how did you guys I know initially when you started touring that was had to be fun, had to be exciting. Oh. But after a while, is that how you come up with Traveling Man? Just well, some of the things happened on the road, running up yeah. and down the road, running in and out. 
out of the bank, you know, and trying to mm-hmm. trying to get to your next gig, and you know, that's, mm-hmm. there you go. That's all the, like the words, so, like that. So, mm-hmm. uh, um, ho- ho- hopefully, uh, people will see that. So, oh well, that's nice. I, I was fortunate enough to get um, uh, Sunny Rose to play the late Sunny Rose to play on my. Um, CD too, you know. So uh, uh, my version is coming out uh, pretty soon. Uh, it ha- has uh, has that on there, and uh, and uh, the middle version uh, that uh, we we recorded on three by three. John John is singing it, and you know, I'm proud to hear, hear him singing that too. You know, yeah. he does a fine job on that. Appreciate it. Okay, so we will jump into that in in a second. Anybody have a favorite place that you went while you were out touring? Ooh. I can't think of Yeah, I got one. <laughs> I knew you would. Go I ahead. got one. But I have several of them, but the, okay. the ones that really impressed me the most. I, mm. I did a show in Malibu, California, uh, mm. uh, Pepperdine University, okay? Okay. And they treated us like kings and queens over there, you know? Wow. And I got a chance to meet a lot of the California artists, you know? Good. That's good. And, and a few stars, too, like Jim Brown. Mm, okay. Now I want to ask you, John. How did you get the name Mad Dog? Where did that come oh, from? Oh God! In the research, I'm like, oh, I okay. didn't know this. We were on tour. <laughs> I with I, I was on tour with my uncle's band, right? Okay. And they they decided we we had been out there for weeks. I mean, you know, six, seven, eight weeks. We were very tired. And at the end of, it, we were supposed to go in the studio. I met this guy. His name was Alan Schuster. All right. And we will finish the gig. Alan Schuster was actually a tour guide, which I had no idea that he was responsible for doing the album cover. No, it never crossed my mind. Right. We were in the restaurant and as, as Freddie and uh, Maurice know, they allow dogs in the restaurant. All right. And during this time. This the lady come in with her dog, and Alan Schuster was bashing the dog, you know, and because mm-hmm. he, he was a little dog, he, I guess Alan wasn't afraid of him, and he was just bashing this dog, bashing his dog. Well, I'm a dog lover, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, we got decided to go up, uh, load up the uh, SUV, and at the last piece he put in there, and they had, you know, they have hatchback, you know, you know, what hatchback is yeah, right. Yeah. He had to reach up and grab the hatchback to close it. I snuck up behind him and grabbed his leg and whoa, 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 right? <laughs> oh, now, that was okay. Was Everybody like laughed. Is. We had a good time about that. But when I got back home to the States and they sent me a copy of the album, mm-hmm. guess what? Mad Dog John Watkins. That's where that name was born. Uh, Mad Dog. Yeah, so you got job. it more innocently than I thought you <laughs> did. <laughs> that's the truth. Okay. okay. Yeah, what's your mind? That's his, that's his story, and he's sticking with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, are there any musicians that you admire? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah, hold well, yeah. One of my favorites was Luther Allison. Okay. I, I thought so many it was, I was really impressed with him because he he did an album on the Motown label. But I'm I'm really depressed the the fact that they honored all of the artists on the label, but they never came up with a blues section. Mm. All right, and I got a copy of the album, so I know it was true, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But a Motown, Barry Gordon, them never acknowledged the fact that this came from their studio. You know? Okay. Let's yeah, see, I want to... Let me, let me okay. say something. Sure. During the um, early 50s, late 40s, things like that, Motown artists would come in here to record. Like, uh, what's the name? Uh, um, what's the guy? Uh, you just not... not uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, who, who killed his father? Uh, Oh, Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye used to record a chess record, you oh. know, and things like that. A lot of them groups that uh, were from here mm-hmm. uh, uh, went to Motown, you know, before they, before Motown.
Motown got big. They made it here and then went to Motown. See, at the Motown, see, because Chicago had to had all of the, the promotion, the, the yes, promotion yes, right, yes, right yes, here. It depended so, on chess. Chicago, so, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so a lot of artists were uh, uh, Didn't get big, on the radio could, so right, until they, until came, they to Chicago. came to Chicago. That's right. So, okay. So people wow. don't know that they think Motown was the place to be, but early days was here in Chicago, Chicago. Would be the place to be. So, okay. You know, so. But uh, uh, also, uh, <clears throat> a lot of them singing groups, you know, like the Spaniels and the Dells and things, people like that, if they got they stars here, you know, a lot, a lot of them, see, in Motown they had, you know, Temptations, but they was, they were later on, you know. Okay. They were later on town got big so okay well so, i mean john you touched something when you said motown didn't have a section uh, recognizing blues contribution and that's what? you know that's why i wanted to talk about yeah well you this. know the, the blues is always going to be last why why do you think that because uh, uh this tells our heritage as a people it's our music it, mm. it, it tells uh, uh where we come from. Mm-hmm. That's our that's our music as people. And uh, if you don't know that, you lost. Because right. all American mm-hmm. music comes from the blues. Mm-hmm. And the blues is the most powerful music on the face of the Ooh, earth. Go ahead and say it. And so uh, uh, people, mm-hmm. and the people shun it because, you know, as, as children, when I was coming up, we heard the blues. It was played on the radio. Mm-hmm. But today, I'm going to give a perfect example. I had a friend. I invited him to a show. He said, I said, man, come here to the band play. He said, I don't want to hear that shit, that sad shit. I said, what? I said, come to the show, man. You enjoy yourself. He came to the show. He had such a good time. Before the show was mm-hmm. over, he's going to tell me about the blues. Mm-hmm. I'm introducing him to the blues. Now he's yeah, telling me right, about the right, blues. Right. Because you <laughs> found out that the blues wasn't something <laughs> sad all the time. He thought it was a sad crime music. Mm-hmm. But the blues was sad at one point. When we were first we're going were, through. When we were first going through it. Right. One, but but see, uh, it wasn't always sad. Because if it was always sad, we wouldn't have nothing to sing about today. Because, right. you know, during right. them days, slavery, whip on your back, you had to have some kind of enjoyment. So mm-hmm. the blues wasn't just always sad, but, you mm-hmm. know, um, they had to have something to, to think it, about. To endure. To, to endure. Yeah, yeah, it makes yeah. it easier when, you, when you're thinking about something good. So the blues is not always sad. But people, the, the artists today don't give the people, uh, the blues artists, uh, um, the old blues artists, the recognition that they need because they stand on the backs of these old blues artists. Exactly. So. And go ahead. You went, one, yeah. one, one, one short thing about the uh, what uh, John mentioned about the Luther CD. I, I played with, uh, with Luther back in 1980 uh, for a short time. And... Uh, when he and uh, he he brought out this uh, album. I said, "Oh boy, this is this is kind of banging here, you know, like that." But uh, Luther was not that excited about it because he said that, uh, "Man, that I didn't have that uh, any any uh, creative input on that. That album was done." David Fathead Newman's playing saxophone, you know, all of the Motown things is going on, and they just brought him in to play on top of that. It was already it was yeah, already right. done. See, so it's not it's none of his no, creative input right. at all, except for him to get on there and sing and solo. Wow. You so, see, so so he didn't that get that any wasn't credit. Any, any well, he, yeah. he's the artist, mm-hmm. but live, uh, pass or fail, if you the you know if you the artist up front. But but you're not the one that that kind of formed the whole thing. You see, that makes saying. a big Your difference now. Now yeah. when you're able to do that, that's why this yeah. CD we got is so important. Now we were able to put this together like we wanted to put this together. See, yeah. that's, uh, that's, right. That's, that's uh, so. John, you were going to say something. Yeah, I, I wanted to say I wanted to thank your brother for uh, performing with us. Over or uh, in Canada and the United States, we just did a show at uh, Legends featuring your brother mm-hmm. Gary, Gary Martin. Martin. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm, he'll be happy to hear you call him out. Yeah. <laughs> Shout yeah. out to yeah. him. Hey, Gary. I'm speaking of Gary, yeah, how about that twenty dollars, yo man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, just kidding. Man. Still owe us some money, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll connect on the next show. Uh, okay. Wow. 
<laughs> okay. So um, I just want to ask a few more questions before we go into your guys' CD because we got to talk about that. Um, what's most important in your careers right now? In your life and your careers right now? The most important thing to me is I want to keep the blues alive. Like mm -hmm. my father. My father believes the blues is the most important music in the world. And he wanted it to be played at prime time, you know, on some big station, not on a little small station, you know, and uh, uh, that's what I, that's that's my goal, to get it played at prime time, because it's very important for the kids to know their heritage and see if it, it's going to get to a point where uh, now that uh, uh, you're going to say the, the white man invented the blues, well, he gave us the blues first, I admit that he gave us the blues, but he didn't play the blues. You know, yes. And and somebody gonna say that uh, uh what's the guitar player or 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 Steve Vaughan? No, Steve no, no, another Galvin England. Uh, 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 oh, um, uh, Eric Clapton. Eric, Eric Clapton. Clapton. They're gonna yeah. say Eric Clapton invented the blues at some mm -hmm. point because we don't get a chance to hear it. Mm -hmm. And when they play and when they playing it on the on the radio, they say it's a blues station. They playing on BB King Blues Station. They ain't playing nothing but rock. They're playing, they playing no blues, no straight up blues on the station. Yeah. They're playing more rock. Yeah, I, so I, I, at I, some I, point, the kids going to think that that's what it's supposed yeah, to be. That's, that's, and that's I what say it is. That. Actually, it's a that. popularity contest. That's what it is. Ah. This person is more popular than they, mm -hmm. they, they gravitate toward them. Mm -hmm. like the, who's getting the most yeah, yeah, who's getting record the, sales, who's getting the most, right. uh, the biggest, larger right. audience. Right. And I, I, I believe that wholeheartedly that. The blues is more than music. It's a culture. It's our heritage. Right. Let me tell and you. Let me say this. I have a, a um, Chinese guitar. I mean, Chinese violinist in the band. Mm -hmm. She's telling some of the guys in the band. She said, "Y'all can't play the blues." And she told them they, they can't play the blues. They had a white guitar player, an Indian uh, from um, the Dakota tribe. Mm -hmm. I got a, 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 a drummer. And, and two guitar players. And so she's telling them, y'all can't play the blues. And they, they couldn't understand what she's talking about. She said, well, um, because y'all don't feel it. She said, y'all don't feel the blues. Mm -hmm. You have to go through something to feel it. That's what Judy's trying to tell them. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can learn to play the blues, but you don't have that. It's not in your DNA. She said, it's not in your DNA. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they couldn't understand until I explained to them what she's saying. She said, you know, like, you have to be born with this in you, you know, to really, play. you can learn to play the blues. You right. Know, you can learn songs, but that fear will never be there. That's what Judy yeah. was talking about. Yeah, it is. <coughs> yeah. So if there was one thing you could change about the business of the how the blues is handled, what would that be? To as what one of the well one of the main things you said was to play it on mainstream radio and then play it. Play the the blues during prime time. Yeah, during prime time. But what about? Uh, I think I think part of what we would think. That yeah, to that's what I'm trying to say. More yeah, more yeah, authentic. Right, right. right. You know, yeah, so. because well, well, everybody, <clears throat> a lot of people who haven't 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 been through those things. Mm -hmm. They can write about it. Right. They can sing about it, but they never they never been through those things. And Robert Crabe was a little embarrassed, uh, and he 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 started singing about um, oh, oh I beat my woman up and all this stuff like that. And then the ladies were look, kind of looking at him, you know. And he said, "I don't feel funny singing about stuff like that right, because right. He, I don't do that." And right, I don't, right. You know, like that. so so that this is that was a lot of part of it too, you know. So right. some of these songs were written when at right. times. When when this was happening in their life, mm -hmm. but, but life you know styles change, of course you know. Like right, that. yeah. Because I I do hear people, some people say, oh, uh, like you said, um, Freddie, oh that's old, that's old timey or something. Mm -hmm. But one thing my sister um, reminded me when she was working on the West Side, she said, you pass through and that's all you hear people playing. Mm -hmm. You know, loud in the summertime, they're playing the blues and they're playing the authentic blues. Yeah. Right. So um, we want to hear it because, yeah. first of all, as you right. said, it's a lived experience. It's a, it's, 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 it's a thing about the blues. Mm -hmm. It's the beat. It's the feel. Yeah. So you can feel the blues when it's being played. You can pat your feet to it. Mm -hmm. You clap your hands to it. Mm -hmm. 
Europe, they go over Europe. They, you know, they go according to the field that's right. coming from that, that coming. music. They don't understand the words. That's so right. So they can, uh, get and that's yeah. that's what, that's where some magic comes in. Yeah. Right. You know, and uh, you, you you watch people like Junior Wells when he was performing like that. You know, you're going like, the, why's he doing all that little? We were saying, why why's he doing all this little corny stuff? He's a, <laughs> he, and and uh, one of my friends explains to me. He said, well, look. You know, uh, he's bass player. Said, "Look, uh, Junior is a big Curly fan. That's why he was doing stuff like that. Nya, 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 and all that. He was a big Curly. I said, well, the Three Stooges. Okay, I get it now. You know what I mean? And those things yeah. like that have a lot to do with your, oh, with, with uh, performance and everything. Yeah, he incorporated yeah. all of this." Think of putting the three stooges for one. It's just in like vaudeville. It's like vaudeville. You know? Something like vaudeville. You brought the culture. Yeah, like yeah. Vaudeville. You gotta I mean, do you can't everything. Take, everything. So you have to do everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can't take you can't take the culture from the blues because it belongs. It it came out of the culture. Where did where it, it come from? Exactly. So if if the blues disappears, then a lot of our history will also disappear That's and right. we can't we can't, can't allow it, it. Yeah. no you can't let it happen yeah. Yeah. It so but you know they got it's a good it's a good part of this it's some good young blues artists coming oh out absolutely there. so yes. and that's what uh, that's what i thank god for them gotta, coming along so yes because you know if it wasn't for them uh the blues would die out because mm -hmm. and they are just struggling trying to get their records on, on okay play, absolutely. So absolutely this is why um uh, start having some of the young artists up here playing their music too so uh you know give, give them give them a chance you know and yes absolutely and support them mm -hmm. so somebody gave can. us a chance yeah. a long time ago so we right stand John? On, like i said we stand on the backs of people <laughs> right and, people. We, and we learn from each other old and young we right. still learn from each other there's mm -hmm. still yeah. something to be learned so we're going to get into this cd three by three okay, <laughs> okay. all right so tell me about it. Um, whose idea? How did it come together? Marley started this crap. What? <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, my, well, my, I wanted, this is my, 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 my reason's idea, though, really. No, really? no, no, Freddie, Freddie and I uh, mm -hmm. talked about this for a while, yeah, we but did, we finally uh, did, did it this right. time, you know, and we got right together up. and do it there. But I said we, we could only do this if. Uh, I want to do what I want to do, and Freddie wants to do what he wants to do, and John wants to do uh, what he wants to do. And I think it would be a better CD because of we're, we're able to, you know, express what we want to do and get our ideas all, on, all mm -hmm. together on there. And and it worked out just fine. Uh, Freddie's doing tribute to his, his dad's and doing his dad's music, uh, Willie Dixon's, late Willie Dixon songs, and uh, John's doing his live show uh, that he, he, when you see him, you see, when you hear the CD, you're hearing John live too, a lot of times. Oh, so, so. all right. Except my song, Child of Man. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a lot of these songs are, well, you just brought them in, work that you've done. We, we brought in, and, and, and since it's my label, we're able to do what we want to do as opposed yeah. to this. Uh, no, we're not going to do that song. That doesn't go with this song and everything. See, the label tells you, directs the whole thing sometimes. And it's, it's sometimes it's a misdirection because it's a compromise. Every, you have to compromise everything. I have to leave the song I really wanted to do out because mm -hmm. the label sort of says, boo, we can't do that. And then God told me, he, on my last CD, the guy said, well, uh, CD is too long. So that's why I left your the other song on. Oh, I said, well, "What? This is the song I wanted on there. I got my Italian friends are playing on there and everything like that. And, you know, well, CD is too long, so he just and left he didn't the song." Consult on. with you first. Hmm? He didn't consult with you first. He just no, left it off. No, it's a, when I saw the CD, it was done. Oh uh, wow! Time, time. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, so that's why I wanted to do um, one. One that I, I was in Charge control of, of you know, right. so so it can, and then we we didn't rush, no. 
Brown University. Okay. We had an excellent, uh, we had an excellent engineer with with amazing ears, Mr. Byron Harden, and uh, he he did, did the whole CD. In fact, he's legally blind. Mm. Too. He did the whole CD. He's amazing, and yes, he he's is. a teacher and, and everything. And we really got to, I got to give a lot of kudos to him. And uh, he had the patience with us too. Yeah. Because uh, uh, yeah. some of the uh, other uh, people in the studio, they were going to rush you through, oh, and yeah. you got to pay a lot of money. And they, and they yeah. you, you know, we felt so comfortable yeah. in his studio. You know, we'll be coming yeah. back and keep coming back and doing other and his things. Mother, and his yeah. mother cooked some of the best pies and cakes. So, you know, so yeah. I was comfortable yeah. there. Yeah. Made, <laughs> that's awesome, yeah. And he made us sound good. That's Thank right. you, Byron. Yes, <laughs> John, you... Well, the main thing is that, that I liked about the whole project, it was like a family thing, okay? Yes. We got in there, nobody was di being a dictator or mm -hmm. nobody was taking charge. You had a chance to express yourself right. with your views of what you want mm -hmm. on the song. And that was very impressive to me. And nobody really got offended because Maurice was talking about, what about that $5 you owe me <laughs> on my record? You know? And I thought about it. I said, you know, now that's cool. That's Did cool. you ever pay him the $5, though? No. No, that, no, no you don't, don't get the $5. Dollars. Dollars. I, I spent it. <laughs> 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 so that, that made everything interesting. We got a but, chance to uh, act crazy yeah. and, and have fun with the whole thing. I was really impressed with Byron, though. You know, and this guy cannot see. He's uh, blind, okay? And he was coming in to set up everything, you know, and he was around putting all the chords together, and I, I thought he could see. Yeah. He, until yeah. I sat down in the, into the control room with him, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, that impressed the hell out of me. Mm -hmm. You know what was impressive, though? Uh, and, it, and, 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 and I... I knew it was going to be impressive. Well, it wasn't impressive to me uh, because we we have been playing together so long, you know, in okay. different gigs. Yeah. So it was easy for us to get along, you know, mm -hmm. uh, after years and years and years. And man, I'm going down the road talking about what we're going to do, what we're going to do. And we're kind of making it happen now. Yeah, right. So, so, you know, yeah. talking about it is one thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you but know, yeah, yeah, bringing it to life. Yeah, bringing it to life. That's why this is so important yeah. for us. Okay. And everybody needs a project like that to make them feel good about themselves yeah. again, and you know, swell mm -hmm. up a little bit more. It makes carries you a little further. Yeah. An inspiration. For right. You, for your next project. You know, right. So. Um. So I did notice one of my absolute favorite songs is in here. I think. Um, oh, what was it? <laughs> Um, so I should us, I should know the name of, us, of it if it's my two favorite. Of us are gonna be, oh. <laughs> but no, no, no. It, oh, don't be, don't be. Okay, no, I love easy. you all. I do. Easy. I love all your music. But it, it, it was a Willie Dixon song. Um, uh, was it? How does it go? All I want to do. I don't make want love. you to work all day. All I want to do is yeah. yeah. Make, um, love, make love. Right. Make John did. Love. John. Oh, okay. That's John's well, song. John sang that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> But Thank really you. Yeah, that's right. Look, he's, that's right. he's really he's, soaking it up. It's he's a favorite saying, song. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you know why I ended up with two child support cases at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> keep saying it, John. That's right. Um, keep, there's keep, quite keep a bit it. in here. Little Red Rooster. Um, and then Everything I Do has Got to Be Funky. That, I love right. that. That's right. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man, there's so many guys. They're double CDs, and yeah. they're they're available. And the thing of it too, the the CD came out during the pandemic, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. We recorded during the pandemic. Recorded, we sit okay. around playing cards, and then we decide, <laughs> well, let's go record something, you know. Yeah. <laughs> of, so so I'm playing cards, hey, go do so nothing. Did, did that kind of slow down with like being able to promote it and things mm -hmm. like that? Uh, it's, it's, uh, well, we're like, constantly promoting it. Okay. We're promoting you know, it right we now. You know, we never stop doing that. That's right. Because you do that, you're going to fall You're helping us face. do that right no. now. Right. Okay, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. This is, I love yeah, it. We got I good friends it. playing on there. Uh, Tim Taylor and uh, okay. Shirley Johnson does a little uh, uh, background thing. I'm kind of uh, producing her, her new CD that she's going to have. Mm -hmm. And uh, we so, so, and uh, we got, John's got a, a friend playing harp, 
uh, with them. Yeah, uh, Carl, Carl Kevin Kevin Lee. Lee. Uh, Oh, yeah, got yeah. The, got the root doctor, root and doctor on that plan. Doctor's there, on there. Okay. And, um, and everybody's helping. Bob Lazzandrello, Chris Bone. Yeah, Chris Bone. Yeah, the trombone player. Amazing trombone player. So we're going to chat. Yeah, I, was, I checked it out. I, I At one point, some of the songs sounds like a, a full like concert. It, it's, I loved it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Absolutely. Well, thank you. And, and then some of them have been, uh, these songs have been around a little while. And yeah. I, I kind of went to my vault. And, uh, <laughs> Did you? That was part of my contribution to that, you okay. know, because we had some Canadian musicians playing mm. and some some musicians from France, Fred Bruce and his band, and uh, and then some uh, musicians I have to play with tonight. As a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Uh, Bob Mandarino and and his uh, home records uh, are playing on uh, a couple of uh, two of the songs with mm-hmm. me, you know, and I have a little tribute to to um, uh, Detroit Junior. Late great G. Troy Jr. Yeah. We work with him. The piano player. He used to play with Holland Wolf. And What's the name of that song? People like that. Yeah. If I hadn't have been high. Yeah, that's the one. That, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. If you hadn't been high, Reese. <laughs> and it was me this morning then. Huh? Yeah, it, wouldn't have, it, it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't have been high. That's right. That's right. So I want to ask you guys, now, if you weren't pl- playing the blues, what would you all have been doing? Did you do a, some oh, other work before you? I don't be- want to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> what other work mm. did you did you do any other work? I worked in an ice cream place. Did you? Yeah, ice cream factory. Overwise ice cream. Ah, oh, okay. For ten years. Oh. I, I, I played R and B and funk back in the seventies oh. with a a group called Morning After. Oh yeah, you sent me a a sample of it. Very yeah. nice. R and B straight oh, up. Oh and, yeah, oh yeah. And funky Maurice, Mr. I thought John I heard you playing some R and B in your career as you well. Sneak it in. Yeah, Maurice, Maurice played R and B. Yeah, I know you did. I, I ran That's across some of your music. Yeah, R and B. And um, and uh, but well, we were talking about the jobs. I had many jobs. I I I stocked auto parts. I cooked chicken. I uh, delivered flowers. Post office. I, I worked oh, three, yeah, I was a mailman about three or four years, and, uh, and so, like you know, they, can't you find something to do? That was my dad. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> other than that, <laughs> uh, playing the instruments, you know. So, so that's uh, this. This is the most important job to me. Mm-hmm. You know, was uh, always something because to do with music. So. Because it's not a job, and when you enjoy it. Yeah, and then, yeah. and then I think as musicians, it's who you are. Am I wrong? Yeah, you it's gotta who be you who are. you are. It's, you or, is it, or you, it's a job if you're not doing who, right. who you are. Right, yeah. Part of your identity. Yeah. And I, I, I can't complain because I've been around the world uh, playing music, and I've, I've been to Europe over mm-hmm. 30 times, and uh, I've been uh, to uh, China once uh, hong kong once and okay. uh, <clears throat> in brazil we mm, went yeah. to brazil freddie and i went there and uh, mm. and john's been everywhere he I, in fact we were real jealous of john <laughs> you know being with his uncle uh, jimmy johnson over there for six months at a time come back from there he can buy houses yeah. and all this well, john stuff still like that. got spending that money. john still got that money <laughs> <laughs> you gotta store yeah, it up better, somewhere. You, better, you better be cool. You hey, know hey, you're hey, hey, two hundred dollars. Hey, hey, uh, hey, I got see? somebody over here with a hey, rock hey, with your hey, name hey, on it. Hey, so hey, be hey. careful. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Use that you rock on too. it. I rock with your name, boy. <laughs> no. Oh man! Talking about my money. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Um. So I want to ask you guys: Do you own your masters? Yes. You guys own masters. Yes. Okay. Good. That's excellent. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh. Yeah. So, um. My. Uh, two. Three. Yeah. 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 The. the Okay. To it. That's that's why it's so important for this. Uh, from uh, the label is on is Reesey Records, which mm-hmm. was a, my, one of my nicknames. Uh, 
I, yeah, I, I should have had Mad Dog together. Records. You know, that would have been more impressive. People <laughs> wow, 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 wow. 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 <laughs> you know. But anyway, that's, uh, that's that was uh, my nickname. I passed that on to my son. His name is okay. Maurice too. So, uh -huh. but but uh, that's why it's it's mm -hmm. important because uh, the direction uh, we we want we want to go far, but. We're not going to be like uh, Motown or any place like that. But at least we're doing what we want to do. It was really important at that time, you know, mm -hmm. as opposed to to uh, getting it to be the most popular CD or whatever like that. Well, so, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do a Grammy thing, and, and yeah. we're putting it on your uh, CD. That's right. Good. On, the, on, on, his, label. on his label. Okay. okay. We got a Grammy Excellent. thing coming up. All right. You hear that, John? Don't yeah. No more, yeah. No right. more yeah. subpar work. That's right. We're doing That's Grammy right. work now. All right. <laughs> now, right. when did you start this <clears throat> record label? Uh, I actually started it a long time ago um, in... Oh, I would say the um, uh, early, uh, early 80s because I was going to do uh, my first CD was a g generic blues album and I kept going to all the labels, the blues labels around Chicago where uh, Alligator wasn't interested and uh, um, the Rooster Records, uh, he had just cut a big CD he with, with Valerie Wellington, he was spending money on that. And then Blues was doing, um, uh, Blues had their own label, which is a, a club there. They had started up their own label, but they had a waiting list. Well, you, mm. We got to wait about a year to, to record. I wanted to put mine out now, so that's why I started my own label. Mm -hmm. And my first artist that I had on there was myself, but the second artist that I recorded, uh, 45 with a lot of people don't know that is Detroit Junior. Mm. Freddie played on yeah. the, the first uh, Detroit Junior uh, mm -hmm. 45. I had Freddie and uh, Alan Bats was on there and uh, and um, Mike. Oh, oh, uh, Mike, Mike McGee, McGee on the drums. Yeah, Mike McGee and uh, so different people Coffee. like that. We played on uh, and we played on the on the, on the 45. Back then, it was was really important too because all I could afford to buy was forty fives. Really, mm -hmm. back when I was a youngster, you know, coffee. Yes. Now that was an amazing association because all of us ended up on the new new Blue Bloods album on uh, on the Alligator label. That's, yeah, that's right. That's I mean, right. Yeah. Sounds of blues. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, all three of us. Now I want to ask a couple more questions, and we're gonna start winding down. Mm -hmm. um, you had two. Uh, records to become movie soundtracks. Oh, oh, one one of my songs. One uh, of one them. Of, one of my songs. Uh, Everything I do got to be funky. Is yeah, part of the, a major me. league two soundtrack. And, okay. Uh, they chose uh, they chose it. Oh, well, I'm I'm re really impressed because they uh, and happy because they uh, they chose my song out of the CDs that they were sent. So it wasn't like. Uh, do this, you know, right, the, and they just mm -hmm. sent the album uh, mm -hmm. in the Shadow of the City album that I had. Was my, was what was my the name of the movie? Major League Two. Major League Two. It was uh, well, they made a lot of movies about baseball when they had the uh, strike, the mm -hmm. baseball okay. strike, and, and that that was the second, uh, the second uh, Major League Two. The first one was Wesley Snipes and them. The second one was Omar Epps was in uh, one of the stars in there, and the guy that does all state commercials he was doing there <laughs> too. <Yeah. laughs> Dennis. Anyway, uh, uh, so so mine became part of the soundtrack to Major League too. Mm -hmm. I'm also on there with uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan and 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 uh, and his brother Jimmy Vaughan. Uh, they they got a song on there too. So, okay. but it's somehow it's a popularity contest, like I said. Yeah. They Vaughn, would promote the their, Vaughn was in promote there. Their, but not mine. You're the Vaughn, you got on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm on there. Yeah, so that's, 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 that's what it matters. That's what matters. Yes, that's a that's yeah. major thing. You know. So, um, you guys, people always ask you what's the best advice you've ever been given. So, I'm going to ask you to give out, <laughs> give <laughs> advice to up and coming artists. I got it. Yeah. Okay. Best, I got the some. best advice I, I can got give. Some. I like to start this because this business is so challenging. Mm. I would suggest that you never get up, give up, 
no matter how hard times get, keep on pushing. Basically, I was going to say the same thing. I said, no matter how many people you're playing in front of, give it your best. It can be one person or a thousand mm, people. Okay. But play your best at all times because you never know who's watching you. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Hey, Freddie, do you remember when we played Place des Arts in uh, Montreal? Yeah, Canada? I remember that. And one but six people in the place. And we played the uh, best music we ever yeah, played in our lives. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm talking about the time we I'm played. Talking the, about, I'm talking about was that Doodoo's place, was that Doodoo's place, was that this rising sun. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I'm talking about Place des Arts. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, man. I mean, oh, my God. I had that first time in my life I had stage fright. I tell you, you got to say, get your ass up there and play, man. Say, come on, man. We got to go to work. Come on. That's come right. on. Come on up out of that. <laughs> get your ass up there and play. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, the advice I would, I would, I would uh, I give to uh, young artists is, is to stay interested. You, uh, you have to, you have to really be interested and uh, to, to stick with it. You know, stick yes. with it, and, uh, and you, I was really interested in uh, being in the, being around music and being uh, on stage, being in the band, being in, being an entertainer like that. You really have to have the interest yeah. in order to stick with it like that, because it can beat you. This business can kind of beat you up, band. Yeah, because you know, I really, I had to cut you off, but you are so right. But because if you're into it for the money. Right off the bat, you ain't gonna make it. It's a bad, bad idea. Yeah, you might get some money in the long run, but if you think you're gonna, just go and make a lot of money, forget it. Especially playing the blues. And they got also tons of jokes about it. They don't like a lot. Like if you want to be a millionaire playing the blues, first start out with two million. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then you be a millionaire too. There you go. There you go. Okay. Because <laughs> the first million is gone. There you go. <laughs> uh, so okay. That's pretty much like that. Okay, mm. well, I really want to thank you all for thank you for joining me today. This mm. made my everything. Oh, good, good, <laughs> good. I'm happy. Good. Too. I'm happy. <laughs> this is awesome. awesome. And um, as I said, starting out the show, this is the first time we've been back since yeah. all that time. So, good. and we, wow. yeah, now, now we, we got, got the, the flow going. Like yeah, this. we got to <laughs> open up uh, Black History Month. So how and, how how often we be doing the show? Um, Saturday mornings. Well, every, every Saturday morning. Saturday mornings, but uh, so far I haven't I haven't decided to bring it live. But I think um, I'll bring you guys, bring my guests in on Saturday mornings. But I'll uh, uh, edit and post by by Monday or Tuesday okay. of the next week because I wanted to get out there quick. How did they contact uh, uh, the the uh, and get in, get uh, dial in? How did they dial in? Yeah. Well, um, when I have the the live shows, yeah. there's a number here um, that I would give out the calling line. Well, I meant, I meant uh, they, they want to get on. Uh, oh, if they want to come yeah, on, yeah, appear wanna, on the show. No, no, no. They want to call. Uh, they, if they want to die, they want to listen to. If they want to. Oh, well, then the that show, that, that yeah, you can do through friends, Q4 Q4 dot yeah Q Q4 Radio dot org when it's live Q4 oh, okay. and and then um if I when I take it live it'll go over to YouTube so but yeah you can when it, when it is uh, live you can hear it at Q4 Radio dot org yeah that that's the best place yeah, okay. to listen to it and um, to follow the show is Shy Panther and Friends show on Instagram. And um, <laughs> I want to know about this pound. <laughs> <laughs> and, and on uh, and on YouTube as well. And I'll always provide the link for YouTube, so you just click on it. Okay. But you wanted to know. Well, that's that's a that's a story for another show. No, we want to hear it now. <laughs> <laughs> That's another. Well, I I used to date this guy, and I guess um, I don't know. Maybe I was showing passive aggressive kind of tendency, mm -hmm. like being shy, appearing shy. Right. But then yeah. when, when That's something what I was going to say, <laughs> appearing, right? <laughs> and then when you said something wrong, and next to <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> like the spider, 
welcoming you into the parlor. Say, Come on in. Say, where, <laughs> say, where, say where's your fella at? He in the back of your scratched up eating rocks. <laughs> Y'all scratched up, though. <laughs> Oh, goodness. So, yeah, that kind of sums it up. But I'm really not that bad. I know it sums it up. I'm really not that bad. I promise you well, I'm not. How bad are you? <laughs> Maurice, you missed your calling, bro. You should have been a comedian. Yeah, he's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm out of work enough. I'm out of work enough playing music. <laughs> if I won't be a comedian. You <laughs> say, I'm out of work enough playing music, so yeah. You all need to be worse. Become a mm. comedian. Okay, right. so. Um, we didn't have a place of music. <laughs> say it again? No place of music. Well, you want to. Well, you know what? If I. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. Well. I, I was thinking about it. would it be if it's okay if I like when I put it over to YouTube are they gonna ding me for playing it but I'll put in that it's, I have right to play it it's our music yeah, 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 yeah. okay yeah, well you got my permission <laughs> okay well yeah. hang on one second yeah. uh, uh, let me bring this over I thought you were going to stick it in there when you, when you get a chance in between yeah. comments oh I'll uh Oh, I will. I'll put all that when I post. I promise you I will. Um, let's see. One second, everybody. And let's see. Three by three. I used Maurice's name. John Vaughn. And it popped right up. Okay. All right. Here we go.
John, you still there? Yeah, I'm okay. sitting here thinking about that's the reason why I got in trouble all these years. <laughs> yeah. We don't have it's time for all fault, that, John. Maurice. We don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, everybody. Um, I love having you guys here, and I just want to thank all of our viewers and all of our listeners, and you can reach out to the show at Shy Panther and Friends Show number one at gmail.com. And if there are any musicians out there who may be interested in coming on or talk any, to talk with us, uh, send me an email and we'll see what we could do. Mm -hmm. All right, so any anybody else want to say anything before we head out? Anything that you've been wanting to, like burning that you want to say that people don't seem to ask you in these interviews? Mm, I just want to say thank you for involving us in this project, Gail. Yeah. It's been really been fun. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, well, definitely. And thank you for having us. We're giving us a little, a little, a little more of a voice. Yes. Yeah, so. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> absolutely. You. This is. You can. You're always welcome here. Anytime you guys want to come on, you're you're welcome on the Shy Panther and Friends show. I just want to say I love you, and ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> okay, then. All right. So that'll do it for Shy Panther and Friends show this this weekend, and I hope to see you back soon. All right. All right. All right. Take care. John, goodbye. 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 We on the mic too long, John. We holler at you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, Johnny guys. boy. If, if you need a nice CD, we got the 3x3 three three CD. That's, That's right. what we got. There. We, uh, uh, John Watkins, Freddie Dixon, Maurice John Vaughn. Right. All right, then. That's we, right. We're on there. If you want, you know, block out one or the other. Uh, pictures so you can you know got <laughs> yeah that's right we want to i want to yeah really um thank maurice john vaughn freddie dixon and john watkins thank you very much all righty all right god bless everybody god bless you too okay bye-bye bye-bye thank you that's been fun that's fun